In this tutorial I'm going to be showing you how to change the fuel filter on a RAV 4.3 and it's very similar on a RAV 4.4. 4.2 isn't a lot different but I'll probably do another tutorial on that at some stage in the future. You could use this guide to help you through that process in the meantime. I'm getting a bit concerned about how close this camera is getting to my car so we're going to get on with the process. Start by removing the cover from the top of the engine. It just pulls off quite easily. Then undo the three clips on top of the air filter and lift the air filter cover off. That Jubilee clip needs to come undone. Use a 10mm socket and speed brace to undo that clip. After removing the mass air flow meter plug, just reach down with some long nose pliers and release that clip from the fuel filter bracket. And flip the lid over and use a hook or a similar tool to coax the other clip out. And you can remove that air filter lid right off. There is a special tool for this but I don't have it so you can watch me struggle with water pump pliers. Squeeze the clip together eventually. a bit of struggling and grunting you can get the pipe off and move it to one side squeeze the clip on the breather pipe and pull the breather pipe off that gets the air intake out of the way lift the filter out don't let and the SHCMC that will go nuts. Put a paper into the turbo intake just to stop dirt going in. Don't bother messing with pliers when you're doing this, it's easier with your fingers. You'll see later on when I put them back on. You squeeze the clips, move them back out of the way, and the rubber pipes will come off quite easily. relatively easily. And the ones down the back are a little bit more difficult, mainly due to access. I've slid the clip down out of the way now but can't pull it off so get a pair of pliers just wriggle the pipe to break the seal and then you can push the pipe off. The one down the back is even more difficult. That's my bad arm by the way. Take the bonnet seal off and remove the access cover. Pop that to one side. Use a 10mm spanner to take that steady bracket off. hopeless with my left hand. That's better. Left hand lives on the end of my bad arm. Remove the bracket and just reach down and slide the wiring clip out of the bracket and unclip it. Take the pinch bolt out, that just holds the filter into the bracket, stops it from bouncing out. 
another 10 mil spanner and wriggle the filter out of the bracket. Now over to the bench. Drain the fuel out of the filter. There's still quite a lot of fuel inside that filter, obviously. Don't pour it all over the bench like I did. Shift this trimmer out of the way. It is a working garage, this. Nip it up in the vise, don't go mad, it's only made of aluminium. And then get some water pump pliers to undo the float from the bottom of the filter. That float is there to detect water that might drain to the bottom of the filter. Not so much in this country, but in some countries you get a lot of water in the diesel. And the float detects that puts a light on the dashboard. You can then undo a little tap at the bottom, drain the water out, the float will drop down, take the light off and you're good to go. Drain all that best quality diesel out. Don't save it, putting it back in the tank. It's full of all the crud that you want to get rid of. Put that out of the way and back in the vise to undo the filter. This is the best kind of filter wrench in my opinion. Squeeze it tight and it will fit almost any kind of filter. I never have any success with those three-legged things that just slip off when I'm trying to use those. Tighter. Stop looking at the stuff in my garage and concentrate on this filter. Unscrew it now by hand. You can see my best green diesel in the tub now. Texaco Supreme. Get rid of that. Clean that filter head. This is the part that makes a noise on some of the 4.2s. It appears to be cured on the later models. This is a filter, a genuine filter. You can see the part number. I managed to get 20% off at my local dealer. Take that filter ring out, that's for the float chamber. A little bit of oil on the seal. Screw it on tight by hand. No tools to tighten it up. And just to prove it, I've slowed this down so that you can look at the filter. Picture there, tighten with hand, okay. See, okay. Item with tool not good. Get a karate chop. No good. If 
look at the crud on this uh, little float. We had the same on Kev's when we did his recently. He only uses good quality diesel, so imagine if you're using supermarket diesel. That's what you can call it. There's a huge amount of fuel goes through that filter. Most of it's pumped back to the tank. So it's going to collect all the fine stuff, drop it down. If you look past the float and into the fuel filter, you can see a very tight wad impact into the filter to filter all that stuff out. Just giving it a little blow off with the airline there. I've already changed that seal, by the way, and oiled it. very fine plastic thread. I found some better water pump pliers there to tighten it back up. But really don't over tighten this, nip it up, it's only got to stop air getting into the fuel filter and diesel getting out. Don't worry if you haven't got an airline, just clean it up as best you can with clean rags. Back at the vehicle, slide it down into the bracket. Anchor it down to the bracket with a 10mm spanner. Don't mess about with your left hand. even if you're left-handed, it's not natural. Clip the wire back on. And while it slides out of the bracket, you just clip it back in from underneath. And there's that left-hand issue again. Right hand comes in, does it straight away. The rubber pipes back on, they are moulded and should go back quite easily to where they've come from. You can always take a photograph or mark them up before you take them off. But it is quite obvious where they go. And look, those clips slide on quite easily with your fingers. That's all four back on. Last clip. All nuts and bolts go back clean and oiled. Steady bracket. Now all the nuts have got washers built in. All the bolts are the same, wherever you look in the engine bay. Very high quality, unlike some of these German and French cars. Nip them up, don't go mad, they're not holding the chassis on or anything like that. Just that steady bracket. Now this is real time, me priming the filter, so just watch how long this takes. Starts quite easily because you're just pumping air to start with. And then you can feel it, you can see there with my bad arm that it's starting to pump the fuel. You would have to do this at the side of the road if you run out of diesel. 
just pour some diesel into the tank and prime it up in this way. You can see it's going stiffer now. And eventually it just simply won't go anymore. It becomes quite firm. Clean that air filter housing out which is just full of all sorts of dirt. Jaspers, fag ends, all kinds of things. If you're American, a fag end is a cigarette book. I usually write the date on the air filter and the mileage. Just keeps a nice handy record of when it was fitted. That's a new filter. filter housing in at the back. There are three clips. Put the plug back onto the mass airflow meter. Pop the wiring clips into the bracket and then you can put that air intake on. Wriggle it on. There is a little notch in the rubber pipe that must line up. use your special water pump pliers to struggle with that pipe down at the turbo end. Free the pipe back on, pop the clip back down into position, knit that Jubilee clip up, get of oil. Don't go mad, it's not holding the wheels on, just snip it up. It's doing a lot of creaking, but I promise you it's not too tight. Plastic cover snaps back in. Put the rubber seal back on. That stops all the dirt and oil residue from making its way up onto the windscreen. The engine compartment. Yes, I've seen it. Last one. And then you can start the engine up. Don't always start first time. And sometimes you start and the cough and splutter. Sometimes you start and uh, then you'll cut out shortly afterwards. Just prime it a little bit more if you go. And then just have a quick check round with a hand lamp, make sure you've got no leaks. Everything's back where it should be. Good job done.